At 3,100 degrees Celsius, China has pushed space-based materials research into a new temperature class. Inside the China Space Station, scientists successfully heated materials using containerless laser technology under microgravity, eliminating contamination and gravity-driven distortion. This achievement isn't about heat alone. It marks a turning point in how extreme materials are studied, tested, and refined beyond Earth. Reaching 3,100 degrees Celsius in space may sound like a technical detail, but in material science, temperature defines possibility. Many of the most valuable and difficult to study materials, ultra-high temperature ceramics, refractory alloys, and advanced composites, exist at the edge of what laboratory equipment can handle. On Earth, gravity complicates everything. Molten materials sag, mix unevenly, and react with the containers holding them. This is where containerless laser heating becomes critical. In microgravity, samples can be suspended freely, often through electromagnetic positioning. A laser heats the material directly, without physical contact. That means no container walls, no unwanted chemical reactions, and no structural interference. What scientists observe is the material itself, nothing else. Achieving 3,100 degrees Celsius under these conditions represents a major threshold. It pushes beyond the melting points of many materials used in extreme environments. At such temperatures, researchers can precisely observe how materials transition between solid and liquid states, how their internal structures rearrange, and how they behave when cooled again. These insights are extremely difficult to obtain on Earth, even in the most advanced laboratories. Microgravity amplifies the value of these experiments. Without convection driven by gravity, heat distributes more evenly. Surface tension dominates behavior instead of weight. This allows scientists to measure viscosity, density, and phase changes with exceptional accuracy. The result is cleaner data and more reliable models for how materials behave under stress. What makes this achievement especially notable is that it didn't happen as an isolated test. It was conducted as part of a structured research program led by the Chinese Academy of Sciences, integrated into the broader scientific operations of the station. This indicates not just a successful experiment, but a stable, repeatable capability. In practical terms, China has demonstrated that its orbital laboratory can safely host ultra-high temperature experiments on demand. That places it in a very small group globally. More importantly, it signals that the station has moved beyond proving it can operate and into proving it can deliver frontier science. The real importance of this breakthrough lies not in the temperature itself, but in what that temperature allows scientists to study and eventually apply on Earth. Containerless laser heating in microgravity is a gateway technology. It opens a pipeline from orbital experimentation to real-world materials innovation. At 3,100 degrees Celsius, researchers can analyze materials designed for extreme conditions. These include heat-resistant components for spacecraft reentry, engines exposed to sustained thermal stress, and structural materials that must remain stable where conventional metals fail. Understanding how these materials behave at the atomic and molecular level is essential for improving their performance and reliability. Another major benefit is purity. On Earth, even trace contamination from containers can alter experimental outcomes. In space, containerless methods remove that variable. This allows researchers to measure intrinsic properties with unprecedented clarity. There's also a strong feedback loop between space and Earth. Samples heated and processed in orbit can be returned for post-experiment analysis. This combination, real-time observation in microgravity and detailed examination on Earth, creates a powerful research cycle. It shortens development timelines and reduces uncertainty in material design. Beyond aerospace, the implications extend to energy systems. Materials capable of withstanding extreme heat are central to advanced power generation concepts including next-generation reactors and high-efficiency thermal systems. Precise knowledge of how these materials behave at ultra-high temperatures can directly influence engineering decisions. What's important here is scale and intent. These experiments are no longer exploratory curiosities. 
They are part of a coordinated effort to turn space into a functional extension of the materials science laboratory. The data, samples, and models generated are designed to feed industrial research and long-term technology development. In other words, space is becoming part of the supply chain for knowledge. And containerless laser heating is one of the tools that makes that possible. This laser heating milestone also needs to be understood in context. It didn't happen in isolation. In 2025, the China Space Station supported 31 new scientific and application projects spanning life sciences, microgravity physics, and advanced technologies. Nearly 870 kilograms of scientific payloads were delivered to orbit, while close to 84 kilograms of experimental samples were safely returned to Earth. The scale of data is equally striking. Researchers collected more than 150 terabytes of scientific data in a single year. From this work, over 50 patents were authorized. These numbers matter because they show consistency. High-risk experiments require stable systems, reliable logistics, and long-term planning. The station is clearly providing all three. The role of the Chinese Academy of Sciences is central here. Acting as the lead organization for space application systems, CAS has structured the station's scientific output around continuity and upgradability. Experiments are added, refined, and expanded year after year. That's the hallmark of a mature research platform. What this means strategically is simple. The station is no longer experimental infrastructure. It is a working laboratory capable of sustained high-value output. Extreme temperature materials research is just one example. The same systems that support containerless laser heating also enable long-duration experiments, iterative testing, and complex payload integration. This maturity changes how we should interpret announcements like the 3,100 degrees Celsius experiment. It's not a headline-driven achievement. It's evidence that orbital research capabilities are compounding. Each successful experiment increases confidence, lowers operational risk, and expands what researchers are willing to attempt next. As a result, space-based science is becoming less about proving feasibility and more about optimizing performance. That shift is subtle, but it's one of the most important transitions in modern space exploration. China's 3,100 degrees Celsius containerless laser heating experiment may not look dramatic at first glance, but its implications are profound. It demonstrates that space can now support extreme condition science with precision, repeatability, and real-world relevance. This isn't just a materials breakthrough. It's a signal that orbital laboratories are evolving into permanent engines of scientific progress. As experiments scale up and diversify, space will play a growing role in how new materials are discovered, tested, and refined. What happens next will be even more telling. Higher temperatures, new material classes, and increasingly complex experiments. Each step pushes the boundary of what can only be done in orbit. In that sense, this achievement isn't an endpoint. It's a marker along a path where space becomes an everyday part of advanced science, and where the most important breakthroughs may no longer happen on Earth at all. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.